On today's stream, we're going to be starting with uh, Is It In Soul? This is a build that I was working on yesterday and today. Uh, we are moving away from what I think has become uh, the stock build with Gleeful Demolition and uh, Reckless Bushwhacker in favor of some more artifact-centered themes. Uh, I felt like the Bushwhacker Demolition versions, uh, that was the exploitation point that was the easiest. And the tokens didn't really save you from the sweepers that are already pretty good against your deck. So uh, because temporary lockdown and stuff is so prevalent, I just don't think that Gleeful is, is the root. Uh, and so instead, we're doing a little more burst damage. Uh, we're doing more of the insole artifact style thing. Uh, Case of the Filch Falcon was a, like a light bulb moment for me when I played it for the first time. You know, the chapter three on it, the or whatever, the solved case portion, you know, you get to make a 4-4 four, four flyer. But more importantly, this is the only one of this type of effect that comes with its own target. And if you can do something fun with that clue token, even outside of the target itself, then you have essentially turned Case of the Filch Falcon into two cards. And that might sound, you know, a little bit off or whatever. It's not quite two cards. Even even the, the token that you generate, if it cycles and draws a card, it's not really two cards because you're just spending so much uh, to really get a pretty minor effect. But for one mana, making a token and then later on being that Zoetic Glyph, that and Soul Artifact or whatever has been solid. And so uh, basically we're just leaning into that. And I don't really like any of the Bomat Couriers or other, you know, tr cheap one drop artifact creatures that uh, that you can play. I really like Case of the Filch Falcon instead, so we're going to be playing that. Obviously, Spyglass Siren, Voldaire, and Epicure, uh, and even in the white version when we were playing Thraben Inspector, these were specifically good because they were a body that also created another thing, and in the white build, you're able to use it with Warden of the Inner Sky. And in this build, basically, we just have Smuggler's Copter, but we also have Inti, Seneschal of the Sun. And Inti also gives us, um, you know, a way to not flood later in the game by turning dead lands into a free card off the top of the deck. Uh, when we have Smuggler's Copter or some other things going like the Blood Tokens, the Inti can turn into pure card advantage, which is really impressive. Uh, you can give Trample to the Insul Artifact or Zoetic Glyphs. Um, and overall, I just think that that's a, a really important aspect of the deck that the white version was really missing. I like having the 12... Thraven Inspector style cards in the blue-white build, but the blue-red build having Shrapnel Blast and Inti, I think, gives your mid to late game uh, a much needed boost. And so I'm hoping the case of the Filch Falcon kind of fills the role of that early artifact generator that has a little bit of payoff later in the game. If you wanted, because I, I think that 11 of this effect might be too many. I think 10 might be the right number. So if you wanted to cut a Zoetic Glyph for a Torch to Tower number three, or you wanted to cut Zoetic Glyph in, three, in the two Torch to Towers for just like three Bomat Couriers, something like that, some like really low to the ground artifact, I've been considering, you know, just playing Ornithopter. And if Ornithopter could crew Smuggler's Copter, I think it would be a hit. But because it doesn't crew Copter, I think that it just is too weak. Uh, Mimnite. If, Mimnite's not in the format, but if Mimnite was in the format, I think that the two Torch to Towers uh, would probably be Mimnites. Uh, because I do really want, like, another early artifact effect, especially one that can attack with Inti, Inti doing his thing. Uh, so this is uh, very close to the list that I went 5 with recently, but we have changed out uh, some of the, what I would consider weaker cards for the case of the Filch Falcon. Uh, our sideboard is a, a little bit different. I'm, I'm playing Metallic Rebuke instead of Spell Pierce. Uh, Rebuke felt really good for me when I was playing it in the uh, other build, the Blue Eye build. And so we're trying out uh, it. We're trying it out here in the sideboard instead of the spell pierces that we had before. Uh, three copies of Rampaging Ferocidon. This is mostly for the Amalia combo deck because it stops them from gaining life. But you can bring it in against a number of token based strategies. Uh, Torch of Towers three and four for when we really need some more removal. One Alpine Moon and two Damping Sphere. This is explicitly for Lotus Field, which has seen a pretty big uptick in popularity. And then lastly, instead of Unlicensed Hearse, I'm doing two Graft Diggers Cage. So against the Amalia decks, we have a pretty relevant sideboard plan of Rampaging Frost on Torch the Tower, and Graft Diggers Cage to really constrict what they're able to do. Uh, but this is, uh, is it in Soul featuring Case of the Filch Falcon and Zoetic Glyph together? And we're going to see if uh, making the artifact on the Case of the Filch Falcon gives us enough uh, food, essentially, for these uh, in Soul artifacts. 
Love it. Slightly. All right, we have a pretty decent opener. Uh, one extra land than we would want, but I think that it's a strong contender. Really want to figure out the Night Artifact deck. I am less interested in figuring out things for standard at this juncture. It's almost done this, the standard season. I'm back on Pioneer, feels like. All right, well, Boros Burn. They probably have Helix, probably have Boros Charm, so we have to be aware of those. White, interesting. Okay, so this is the, yeah. All right, so we're probably in some trouble. I am going to go aggro. I don't think I can beat them very easily by playing defense. Blocking against that deck is very difficult. We'll definitely board in some of our removal spells to help out, but I don't think that this is a very good matchup for us. I think that they're very similar in what they're trying to do. You know, make one big creature and smash, and then uh, protect those things. We're kind of doing something similar. We're going for more... Uh, I don't want to say raw power, but more like... Um, I don't know, burst damage? Them playing Reckless Rage on this means that they're unlikely to be able to kill this, but... They're still growing, still growing their thing. We're going to take eight. But if they can't give Trample, we might be in business. And they didn't play another buff spell, and I feel like they would have to pump the 10th district, unless they're holding up God's Willing. All right, so let's go Siren. And I can go Copter over Courier, and the next turn I can go Courier plus Glyph. But I have one fewer blocker this way, and I might take damage from my land. How important is Copter having flying to the overall plan of killing them? I'm probably just dead to Trample, but I have to fade Trample. And I'm trying to figure out how best to fade it. And I don't think it's Copter. I think I just have to put one each in front of these and then just try to tend them. But maybe just chumping the 10th district will be good enough. And then I go Zoetic Glyph on the Copter. But if they have one blocker for the map token, then it's not lethal either. So so maybe it's with map tokens I have to figure out a way to, to lethal with maps. So we can put them in 9. Zoetic is 5. 6 with Spyglass. I guess maybe I just have to draw Shrapnel Blast. I might not have the extra 2 life for this Steam Vents next turn either. So maybe playing this tapped gives us a map activation as well. We're going to do it. And we might actually get in the extra damage with the Unearth on the Combat Courier. And I, I don't think holding back the map took in a block is a winning move. Is this deck arena legal? I don't know. I honestly don't know, Wizard. I'm sorry. I don't keep up with arena uh, format specifics too much. My apologies. How do you feel about Gear Drake? Uh, we drew the Dark Soul Citadel as our second land too often, and we're unable to cast the Gear Drake. I think Gear Drake is fine in a more controlling build. Uh, maybe if you want to do like a more ATOG fling build, um, something like that. Something like this. And we're just going to get trampled over to death or not. Hey, we didn't get trampled over to death. Love to see it. If they don't have a blocking creature, they should be dead to the Zoetic Glyph. All right, let's hope they don't have removal. They could have another Reckless Rage. Reckless Rage on the map. It's tough. Uh, I can bring this back, but it's not enough damage if they kill the map, so I'll just not in case... I don't know. Not enough gas? Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe they just didn't have Trample. I don't know. If they have Reckless Rage on the map, then we'll get a look at something. Oh, we lose the Sokens on. Rip. Was not expecting this. Unfortunate. So now we're dead to most pump spells. Let's hope they don't have anything. I was not expecting Sokens on, but that's a that's one way we lose. But I, I still, again, I don't think we win if we play defense. So it's like, a, who cares? We're just pure racing.
They are not killing me. Wow. All right, so we have to draw a blocker off the combat courier, or I guess let's go combat courier, and maybe we just draw a card off of it. They didn't. They didn't buy Gigantha again. I'm trying to think if like attacking and getting into one extra damage matters. I'm gonna draw a card. I might not be able to attack with either of these. Okay, I can't attack with either. So let's go copter and pass. Attacking with one doesn't do anything, and attacking with both is worse. So we're just dead. Maybe we can attack with one. We're just dead to so many things, but. Maybe not. Maybe if, I mean, they just clearly don't have Trample. We drew Odawara, so we may be able to cheese them. We maybe just throw, like, Copter in front of it as a blocker, and then maybe Odawara something next turn and then attack for 10. Forgetting's the only thing that tracks. I mean, could have a second Sokens on, maybe, or... Maybe they have, like, a Give My Thing Indestructible and... It just wasn't enough last turn. Maybe they have a God's Willing. Okay, so if I crew the copter and attack with everything, they're forced to block both. And we still have the Odawara to maybe bounce something. And it gets around God's Willing. But they have to block two things here. Get to turn the Steam Vents into a fresh card as well. NT. Not quite enough to be a blocker unless the Zoetic Glyph one dies. Okay, so I think we just say go, and then on combat, I don't, they have to have some way to give it hexproof. Odawar usually beats all the God's Willing stuff. All right, we'll bounce this now. None of these trample, or else I could have done like a Odawara trample combo with Inti. It would have been nice. I cannot believe I won that game. Was not expecting to win that game. Pretty happy about it. Uh, we'll just bring in the two more torches. I don't think any of the other cards do all that much. And I think maybe one Filch can come and maybe one Zoetic. We have to be pretty aggressive though. But I think it's okay to cut like one of each of these against the more aggressive decks. Did you look nice in the build? Eh, maybe. I don't really like one toughness creatures in general. And uh, it's more like uh, no Planeswalkers are really seeing play in the format that much, so the haste thing doesn't come up that often. But Odawara is exceptional against the uh, God's Willing decks. They just don't have anything that says hexproof. It's all protection. And uh, the land is colorless, so just get some. All right, this opener looks okay. Favored hoplites. All right. Uh, I guess we lead with spyglass because we're we're not blocking. I don't want to play combat courier on a turn where I want to block. We could filch, but waiting on filch is probably fine as well.
very unlikely I'm going to shrapnel blast the favorite hoplites, so they're going to get basically full run on me. Oh my god, maybe not. If they don't play a land here, I might just shrapnel blast the favored. Dumb. No, I'm not. I kind of want to go Filch Combat Courier, but I think Copter is slightly better. We're not going to Filch next turn, I don't think, so. Now the question is, do we hold back Smuggler's Copter to block? I think one damage versus the threat of blocking is okay. Uh, if if they don't have another Defiant Strike, this Hoplite coming in is pretty loose. If they send both, I, I probably won't, but the threat of it is usually a little scary. All right, so they are sending. I'm just going to take it. I thought I might de deter them from attacking or if they don't have it. But even if they don't have it, if they're a good player, they might just do it for, uh, you know. Hushbringer. Very good against me. It's only creatures at least. I guess we just get aggressive. Loot. Uh, keep the Citadel over Mountain. I will get the case down. Play Combat Courier. And now next turn I can make a 4-4 Indestructible Dark Soul Citadel as a blocker. And they might not know how the new card works. I've gotten... Somebody like that already. Here comes the Legionnaire. All right, well, if they don't have a land we can maybe double block the hoplite or the hushbringer this doesn't trample either so maybe we can do something else to it all right i can't double block the hushbringer because that's flying so we can just chump this with the combat courier i'll take three down to 11 they go up to 14 So we can crew attack for seven and have multiple blockers. I'm not going to make an indestructible one, but we're going to go filch on blue. We'll play spyglass crew. I'm going to hold back like one or two blockers and hope we don't get trampled out. Maybe we hold back Spyglass as well, since we can 7 again in the air, plus Shrapnel. We're going to gain the 1. How much? I mean, the 1 damage might matter, but so will the blocker, I think, on a large opponent thing, posing thing. No ETB for that, so we're going to pitch it. Probably should have crewed the bow mat, so we can maybe double block Hushbringer, or threaten it. can also bring back both combat couriers next turn. Use one to crew, use one to attack, and shrapnel blast. If we draw a land, we can map as well. And if we need to map to get an extra point of damage, we might can do that as well.
All right, Reckless Ray, just going to kill... Are we killing a blocker or the 4-4? Four four? Well, if they're killing the blocker, we're probably dead. All right, well, we got to block. Just block whatever's the most. We don't have to block. I think blocking is fine. Yeah, Montrose is probably lethal. I haven't counted. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, it's just lethal. Didn't matter what we targeted. I think on the play we'll be fine, especially if we can get a removal spell early. But the Machos Rage trample on a big thing is pretty regularly how we're going to die. Without much we can do about it. One thing, they might be trimming on God's Willing, so even if they have mana up, our removal might be good because we have artifact blockers, and the dual nature of the God's Willing being good is that it's protection or unblockable. And here it's only unblockable. Our only protection. I guess we could have played a little more defensively with the case, but even that doesn't work that well. And uh, I would have wanted to make a a one drop blocker there as well with the what you calls it siren. All right, love to be on the play. Reveal Jackman. What's up, Giannini? Taylor Pratt, how's it going, buddy? All right, we got a mulligan this one. Pretty close to keepable, but not quite. Uh, this hand is not the best, but we're going to keep the back uh, Shivan Reef. Not having a one-drop here really stinks. Cutting some number of shrapnel blasts might be slightly better than the other stuff we were thinking about. I'll get Copter down. And the next one we can just make a 5-5 perma blocker that they can't really deal with. But with Shrapnel Blast in hand, there's some chance that I should put it on Copter and go for Copter Lethal over three attacks with Shrapnel Blast. With Hushbringer, I don't know. That's tough. I guess it depends on if I draw something here. Didn't draw anything. All right, we're just going to do this because I need to loot, and I think I'm going to lose if I don't. We're going to kill the Hushbringer while they're tapped out. This is because it has lifelink and flying. We're at 19. If they kill this, we lose anyway, I think. So we're just going to hope that this plus Shrapnel Blast kills them. Or if we draw another Shrapnel Blast, we can double blast them. The Spear. All right. No blocks. Monstrous Rage. All right, so they're just damage bursting. They're trying to get as much on this thing as they can before while they're racing this. I guess they have a God's Willing active. That makes sense. All right, so let's loot. Putting it on a flying creature is pretty solid here. Inti. Okay, Inti can be a blocker, and we'll just play the steam vents, I suppose. And I want to play this tapped. Maybe that's wrong. Because we have Inti and Looting, but the the fourth mana source with the Shrapnel Blast. Like, Shrapnel Blast is already accounting for two more mana, or two mana next turn, so I think playing the land is okay. I'm going to block with the Inti. I think that Copter plus Blast is our only real route to victory. And 
saving ourselves two damage with the empty might be enough to keep us alive. We might be alive no matter what. This the game might be over. You know, they might just like not have a way to deal with copter. Can I win? I can win with just Inti if they have a removal. So it's like if they drew removal, blocking is bad. So maybe I maybe I just take it. How do they deal eight more? Monster Strange is five more. And then Defiant Strike is three more, so that's eight. So Defiant Strike plus Monster Strange is lethal. Might have Hush to block. That's true, too. They could have a Hushbringer post-combat to block. So removal spell or Hushbringer post-combat makes the block bad. And if I don't block with the NTE, I think not blocking is fine because I, I think it's somewhat likely that they have removal. It's somewhat likely they have God's... It's, so, it's very likely they have God's willing. I'm going to feel so stupid if I don't block and die. Because we could still kill them with the empty if we if we don't block and, and they do have their removal cell for the copter. So this is this is the, the the last stage of the game that matters for me. Do I choose to block and lose to removal or hushbringer? Or do I not block and lose to double buff, double big buff? It has to be two big buffs. Or it has to be three buffs. Three buffs usually kills me even with a block. I'm gonna block here, I think. The other one already has trample. Okay, great. It was just a ganjo. They're dead. I'm honestly very surprised that we won this game. Keep this one. This hand's pretty solid. And get the filch going pretty quick here. I wonder if I empty on two. I think I copter on two. That way I can empty with it and maybe get a free land. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he was uh, the original. He did the magic show before I ever started streaming. Although, to be fair, I was on Justin TV back in like 2012. And I don't know that he was necessarily on there. He was twenty. No, even before that, like twenty eleven. All right, copter. This will give us a third for filch as well. So if we don't want to do anything next time, we can just filch it up. Tenny, you gonna try the heroic deck? Uh, you mean ever? Or I mean, I've played it before. I'm I'm not the biggest fan of it. All right, so we will make a, a Dark Soul Citadel on the end step, I think. Or maybe we NT plus attack. This was a mistake if I'm going to NT. I kind of don't want to give them a target for anything. They can fire impulse easily. So I think I just use my mana with Filch. And next time we can go NT crew attack. If they kill NT, we'll play another NT. But I think making an indestructible thing is pretty good. I mean, maybe it's like insanely hard to to get popular in streaming cam. I wouldn't really suggest that anybody do it seriously. It's like uh, you you have to like come to streaming with like a following somewhere else, right? All right, let's go into. We'll crew with the NT and see if they have anything to say about it. And then we'll play the Spyglass. I'm assuming the NT is going to die here. But maybe NT and Copter both die. And we just get only attack with Dark Seal. Oh, they get both. That's awkward. Unfortunate. But 
We still are attacking for a bunch, and we still have an indestructible 4-4 flyer that Phoenix is going to have a lot of trouble dealing with without blocking it with Phoenix forever. Shadow Blast can maybe steal the game as well. Oh, that would have been fun, Cam. I still watch Crit play uh, Hearthstone game every now and then. The Shredder! <laughs> so they're going to take the cruise and now the question is do I just blast the shredder so I can swing in I don't think so I'm going to empty we're going to discard the steam vents See what the top card is. If it's a one drop, we can play it. It's a land. So now we can pop clue token or hold up Shadow Blast. Inti plus the in soul stuff is pretty sweet, not gonna lie. I really want to blast the shredder for some reason, but I think I'm gonna just play it safe. I will just plan on popping the clue. I'm hoping the Inti survives. I doubt it will. You know, we need to use it to like give trample to stuff. That Prismari command was brutal. Three costs, two for one. Force the tower on the Inti. I thought about. Eh, I guess that's fine. I wasn't expecting a two damage one. Mm -hmm. They're definitely going to block. So I guess I just don't. Let's just pop with the clue. Well. Guess we'll insult here and swing with both. Maybe I attack with the Spyglass Siren as well. They block here. No. Because this is a free eat, I think. It's a free eat for them. I don't want to main phase the Shrapnel Blast. I, I think at this point I have them covered from most angles. And uh, I just want to wait for them to tap out so I don't get, lose the spell pierce or whatever because I just don't have enough artifacts to really sacrifice something. If you're going to play a Pioneer Risiki, what would you play? I don't know. What I would play and what you should play are not necessarily the same thing either. Uh, I think Blue Eye Control is probably the best deck right now, but I don't know which build is the best. Uh, is it Phoenix? Is a very easy answer. All right, because I only have the one artifact, I'm going to go for a Shadow Blast here and sack it, and if they have the Spell Pierce, that's fine, because they're, you know. All right, so they're going to go to one, so now they're basically stuck, unable to beat this other Shadow Blast in hand. I really like this deck, though, man. I don't know. I I'm not sure that this is the best build. We're just trying some stuff, but... You know? All right, so they're tapped out. They have two blockers. We're just going to upkeep Shroud and Blast them to show them that we had it the whole time. Maybe we draw Epic here and give them the, the Feels Bads. Nah, no slow rolls. No slow rolls. 
Sign between Boris Heroic, Boris Convoke, Is it Phoenix, Is it in Soul? Uh, I think Boris Heroic is probably the worst of those four. I'm a big Boris Convoke fan. I have a guide semi recent back in early January, I think. Uh, is it Phoenix? Uh, I think Gould Ducat on Twitter is someone who's selling a sideboard guide that I think is a great uh, player and has uh, really good guides. And is it in Soul? I think this, this list is pretty solid. I don't really have that many bad cards in the matchup. Torch of Towers is, is not great. It's probably Torch for Graph. Just to stop some of their graveyard shit. This is the matchup where Graph Digger's Cage over uh, Unlicensed Hearse is bad. Because Hearse can shut down their uh, their late game. Whereas Cage only shuts off Phoenix. But I still think it might be worth. I really just don't think the Torch of Tower is that good. I know that it exiles Phoenix for one. But uh, usually when... that's the, the Phoenix is just a closing mechanism. It's not really something that you want to attack outside of eating the graveyard completely. Maybe it's Rebukes. Maybe Metallic Rebuke is good, but I like all my stuff, so we're going to keep it. All right, game two, up a game. Copter, five land, cage, got them all. All right, this one's a bit better. We'll keep. And I'm just going to put back a land. Put back Steam Vents. Did I get the screenshot? Sure did. All right, sorry. All right, we'll go turn one copter, or turn one cage rather, sorry. Oh yeah, I know. All right, so they played Island Go on one, and then Sleight of Hand Island on two. Very strange. So they might have Spell Pierce, but I think that's fine. Get Copter down. Didn't get pierced. They didn't play Consider either. The bird, man. All right, we'll go for NT Crew. I think the attack is easy and good. And hopefully we hit a land to play if we get to do the NT thing. What are they going to target with this axe? All right, axe Shredder, kill the Copter, okay. Play the stabbed, here we go. Woo! 
<sighs> Brutal. Prismari commands. I'm most shocked so I could blast this. Alright, so I'm hoping we just draw a one drop artifact so I can go that into Glyph and just use my mana efficiently. Brotherhood's in the discard. You know that we're in trouble. They didn't treasure cruise though, so. Oh, turn off auto yield. I meant to buy Jag. Mistake. I always forget when it's over there by itself because it's up here instead of here. Oh, so they have the cruise now. Weird. All right. My experiment with Graph Digger's Cage is over. I just don't play against Amali enough to care. And I play against Phoenix a lot. Young Peasy. Okay, well if they're if they're doing Young Pyromancer, then I think I should leave in my shocks. And I'll probably just cut the cage because they have too many things that it's good on. I don't think I can win the game. We're going to try. We're going to try to kill the Shredder. Three cost Mystical Disputes. Okay, so that was the Spell Pierce I was reading for so long. It was Dispute instead. I'm just going to scoop, I think. We got too brutalized by the Disenchants. All right, so let's go Graph Digger's Cage out. It's just never going to be reliable enough. And we'll just bring back in two torches. So we'll just have our main deck. I kind of want to trim an NT for another torch. NT is okay, but it just dies all their shocks for one, even when their graveyard's not full. Maybe that's not worth. Maybe it's this. Oh, well. Oh, well. Rizmari commands. All right, sand is weak, but we're going to keep. We have to map on one, and then on two, we can case. If we draw a... Actually, we'll just... Maybe it's just... Yeah, it's just Siren into Insul, I think. We'll just swing for six on two and hope they don't have Dispute. If they have the Dispute, there's very little we can do about it. All right, it's red. Great. Let's hope it's not a uh, one that's painful. We did add a 23rd land to the deck. I don't think I talked about that at all, but I think with Inti and uh, Filch Falcon, you know, it's important to just deal, you know, hit your land drops. Hitting the third land drops, uh, hit the third land drop is important. And with Copter and Inti, we have filtering for later. It's not so bad. Okay. Blue source would be magnificent. That's pretty good. Cracklin Drake. Oh, Cracklin Drake. Now we're going to slam on him. Oh, 
Does it seem sick? Yeah, I think so. A third land here would have been really nice if we ever drew it. They did not find an answer to the insole, so they're likely going to be trading. I guess I can chump with a prankster. Oh, they put a phoenix in the graveyard? That's disgusting. And they have axe! Fuck! Fuck! God damn it. I'm just so dead now. So stupid. They didn't attack. Well, now, now maybe I'm not dead. Too many of these. I, I really should have one fewer, I think. But mostly just not drawing the third land, man. I guess I'll just say go. I have to maybe hold up Shrapnel Blast here. And not die. But we can maybe have them shove everything. And then we Shrapnel Blast the Drake after they shove. And then maybe we draw Dark Seal Citadel. We can play Dark Seal plus Glyph while they're tapped out. Phoenix is... Probably the best deck. Because most decks are creature-based decks, and Phoenix just preys on creatures. You know, Lightning Axe. When Lightning Axe is good, Phoenix is good. And they... I don't know that Phoenix was that good against Monogreen Devotion, but now it's, like, really not that great. Because it's... Best cards got killed. Mm. Alright, so now, even if we have... Okay, the way we can not die is we have to blast this. And then we have to draw one of our torches. We have three torches, so we have to draw a torch. Yeah, our sideboard is also just like not that great in this particular matchup. All right, we're gonna keep, we don't have a one, but we do have some powerful stuff. I want to reduce the curve a bit. I think what we can probably do is if, if we trim a Zoetic Glyph, and I, I want to get these, I want these, these three cards out of the deck. I love this core. I think this core is great. And then I, these three cards are just kind of there. I'm not a big Torch of Tower fan in the deck. I'm playing it because I honestly have no idea what else to play. If they made it like if they literally just made like another map guy for one, we'd be doing that, but All right, let's go ahead and play empty and the next time we can install and either get aggressive or not. Definitely not gonna block the gut of bones. All right, Gutter Bones coming in. Definitely going to soak it. Yeah, I mean, we could play the Just Guy mana base and play a bunch of those types of things. Well, this is kind of scary. Was not expecting this to be a Priest of Forgotten Gods deck. I think I'm going to discard nothing. I really need another artifact early drop. But I don't think Bomat Courier is it. And the, the real answer might just be that we have to play 80 card Yorian to have the numbers be right. I've been thinking about doing like a, a blue red build or a blue white build with Yorian. The blue white one would be better because the blinks are good with all sorts of things. Michigo. I guess that's not that good with Michigo, but it's okay. But we're also like. I don't know. Gutter Bones coming on in. Gutter Bones reported for duty. 
I do like the blue-eye control matchup. I think the blue-eye control matchup is good for the blue-red build and bad for the other build. I think blue-white is a bad matchup. Blue-red's a good matchup. Because of Shatner Blast. I've, I've been blue-white with the... I've been blue-eye control two or three times with this build. All right, we'll just sack the Inti for sure. Yeah, having um having Shrapnel Blast changes the math a bunch for the blue eye deck. I don't think the uh the enchantment's that great. The what you calls it? Michigo's rain. Now the question is, can they do anything except bring back gutter bones? Alright, copter is fine. So NT. Back. I'm gonna pitch the other insole artifact because I just need, I guess, shrapnel blast stuff, and I want to get case down this turn. All right. Well, I I can play the land or I can play case. I think I play the land. It's pretty close though. I think. We're not turning on the Filch case that turn anyway, so I think not doing it's fine. So I can crew copter, attack for three, discard something, attack the copter and the blood soap for two mana, play up to a four drop, like a collect a company or something similar. Seems like we're playing against more creature based decks today, whereas yesterday we played against nothing but blue white and uh, what else? Blue White and Lotus all day yesterday. So our portable holes were trash. So I thought Torsha Tower would be trash. Which is why I'm only playing two instead of four. Opponent is cooking. Opponent is cooking with some insidious roots, chat. Got a bones. I kind of want to keep the NT because of Trample. But many of their creatures cannot block. I'm kind of hoping that they just play something that cannot block. And I just get to kill them with Shrapnel Blast. Or I'm hoping we draw some artifacts so we can play Ace, get it online. Dark Soul Citadel would be nice. So we could play case, Dark Soul Citadel, and then attack and activate case to make a blocker. Or four indestructible blocker. Oh no, did my internet die? Chat, did stream go down? Anyone? Good for you. Another priest. Okay. Oh, please, Shock. Please go to four. Well, I called it, I guess. I really wish the cases solved immediately. They would be significantly better, and they're already pretty good. And is there a universe where I Shadow Blast this right now? All right, I guess I would wait till the clue it solves. So let's move to solve. All right, so let's solve. Now, is there a universe where I kill this priest? Leave myself with... Uh, let's see, I would probably just sack the clue. And then next turn I can make a 4-4 flyer. I guess I can, I mean, I guess they'll be able to block the flyer with the smuggler's copter. This is uh, aggressive. But I think that this is more likely to win than not. 
And now we have the 4-4 four, four flyer and the 6-6 six, six grounder, and they have to block one of them every turn. What's up, Knuckleblade? I'm doing pretty good, buddy. How are you? What's up, Kaburb? Mulder Hulk. Okay. I'm doing good doing doing pretty good, Knuckleblade. Mostly just uh enjoying my time playing Pioneer recently. Two Mulder Hulks. Very cool. Very big. No attacks. Okay, maybe they messed up. All right, so let's go Case of the Filch Falcon on the Dark Seal. And then we'll attack, and they'll have to block one. And then we'll Spyglass to have a chump blocker to save us from death. But they can block with Copter, and then they have two 6-6s six coming back. And they go to one. But they're dead to Epicure if they do that, so they might just chump. But now they have to have removal. I think that this is better than sitting back, but maybe not. We lose to a lot of stuff, I guess, now. I think this, I still think the shot of blast on that priest was maybe good. It's close though. All right, no whammies. Been impressed with Soltai Root's combo. Nice. What's the combo? I know the roots is good, but what's the combo? Fortune. Maybe they'll have life gain stuff after board. Maybe Dawn is good. They're also just kind of spamming shitters. Dawn is probably good in general. Five in. I think Glyph is significantly worse against opponents that have uh, the ability to gum up the ground. And Soul is good because it only costs two... Glyph is okay, but we have to, like, change out uh, costs, I think. Hell yeah, Savage. It'll be good to see you there, buddy. All right, and then two more torches come in. I think we might trim some combat couriers. I don't like cutting uh, artifacts, but we're cutting some of the glyphs, so I think it's okay to trim some combats when we go down on the uh, insole package. <clears throat> Sounds pretty cool. I'm hoping the dons are good. Keep. I'm probably going to 5 5 on 2 unless they play priest. We'll go ahead and use our colored mana first because we have Dark Souls Citadel to play the combat carriers, assuming that we need to do that. If they play, I don't know what I'm going to do. Man, Priest is tough. We might just not play a creature. But next turn with combat carrier Dark Souls should turn on the case. Maybe we can do that. Why is combat carrier not a clue? Smuggler's. All right, we'll just get aggressive.
The Lurgoyf. Man, these are just not scary. They're just, like, not even big, either. Alright, so we're going to take the three. Their Lorgoyf's growing bigger. Alright, I'll swing in. They're going to mill three. That'll give them one fewer creature for Copter. We're at 13. We have Shrapnel Blast, though, so there's a good chance they're dead next turn, especially if they don't have enough blockers. I doubt they can deal us 13, but maybe they can do some cool self mill stuff. Like, if they go, you know, one or two Stitcher Supplier on their turn, they can certainly mill enough and crew Copter and attack to kill. It's pretty hard, though. I don't think playing Dawn there is correct. I think we're just leaving too much damage on the table if we play the Dawn. Oh, there's one stitch. Mill zero creatures, though. Good news for us. So they, I don't think they can get aggressive and survive. But maybe they can still attack with just the Urborg Lorgoyf. All right, so they're going to attack for seven here, at least eight if they discard a creature. And if they have one blocker, they're dead. If they have two blockers, we need some help. Their stuff doesn't trample, though, so we can maybe play some defense next turn if we have to. Draw lane, we can play Combat Courier plus Shrapnel Blast. Three cards in hand. They need two blockers or a removal spell and a blocker. Disenchants work. So they need two things. There's one. I don't know, man. Okay. Moving on. We'll go for the attack. If they have a natural state or something, that's fine. No one can do about it. I don't know. Next, sand is pretty solid. We're going to keep. Case has been really good. I like that it generates an artifact a lot. And it's like self sustaining. Uh, it's a good one drop so that I can actually like suit up and so on too and get aggressive. Sparrows. Okay. They probably have a bunch of exile stuff. Maybe it's Copter this turn. There's no way it's Copter. Just five of them. We'll rebuild if they have the chain or something, but they might not. This might just get in 10 damage. And if this clue token plus insult artifact is 10 damage, then I am really feeling good about my life. This is something I wasn't doing enough in the blue white build. I was not turn two in souling because I kept playing Warden on one when I, I think that's probably just wrong. And it's possible that playing Warden at all might be a mistake. But we'll see. But I think maybe just playing it on one is often a mistake. Okay, so Lotus Field. And they're dead. GG. They went and got Beseju. Perfect draw. They're really going to hate my sideboard plan, too. They're really going to hate my sideboard plan, too. Rebukes. Two dampings and an alpine moon. And we're cutting the torches. 
And like all my ones, I think I'm gonna cut Zoetics. They're just slow. In fact, Zoetic is just slow in general. I just really think that the deck has, you know, just something like uh, 32 Stellars and then five Shitters, something like that. All right, so these are definitely gone. The Inties are okay. Copter's good. Combat Courier is fine. Definitely just have too many cards for the matchup. So let's just maybe trim some Smugglers. It needs the most help. Everything else is good on its own. They don't really interact. <laughs> Your parent teach you not to run with multiple scissors in hand. Yeah. Scooter, you cut off the opponent's uh, number of cards in hand, and everyone's asking about it. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. I just thought it was funny. That's what everyone wants to know. We'll keep this. We got the old turn two rebuke, turn three rebuke. Might just ruin their day. I can't really attack. We're going to hold up Rebuke. If they don't do anything, we might try to blast the Voyaging Seder, but if they go for a Tutor for a land, I'm going to counter it. What's up, Taylor? All right, here you go. Cycling of Azir, okay. All right, we're going to go for one more counter spell before we try to blast this, and we might not try to blast this. Oh, I didn't ask you to go look. I said I just been telling everyone three or four. Uh, okay, this one doesn't say can't be countered, so let's just counter this one. I kept the mana confluence. Not what I was expecting, honestly. All right, we got to do it. Too much mana. Mana Confluence. All right, so they tutor. They actually don't even have the thing. So the three black mana doesn't matter. But they're probably going to go tutor the draw three untap. Be my guess. You have opinion on Groove Vehicles in the current Pioneer format. Uh, it was pretty good, like, before the most recent set came out. But I don't think it got anything from the new set. So I think that means that it's, I don't know, maybe not good enough.
Oh, we don't have another artifact rip. Uh, let's buy the Jagman. Shield's mostly down. Maybe, maybe we have to keep the Glisten. I, we definitely have too many cards for the matchup. You know, we have the three artifact enchantments that are good. But four Metallic Rebuke on top of that is probably too much. But maybe we just have to be on the play and have a better aggressive plan. Lockdown. Okay, well, we do have Odawar for that, so we actually can get an extra artifact for the case. When does this trigger? If unsolved, solve at the beginning of your instep. Lame. Only two cards in hand. We've countered their Chandra. Let's see if they block. This is gonna constrict their mana confluences a little. But my guess is they don't counter or they don't block, and then we lose next turn. I'm just trying stuff, Harvey. Uh, I really like Shadow Blast, but I really like the Thraven Inspectors as well. If we had one more Thraven Inspector style card in blue red, I think that blue red would be easily the best version. Um, I think Shadow Blast is better than Michigo's, and I think that Inti is great. But I really like um I really like some of the other stuff going on. In the uh, the blue white. I like Warden a lot. I like the Thraven Inspector. You know, we have twelve. It's all great. Your top five rap artists? Um hmm. let me think on it and I'll come back to you. Alright, so now we can just Ottawara the Voyaging Sater and attack, but they might have a Baseju. But I think we should just go for the kill. Ottawara has been excellent so far, winning me uh, two games, if this one's a game. Colors green. Alright, so they're probably mono green stuff. Did I have six through my first turn by chance? No. Could be Lotus, maybe. I haven't seen Sunken Citadel in Lotus yet, but maybe. Oh, Mono Green Rampers. All right. Suit them up. Remember that turn two clock? Yeah, I've gone turn two in soul like five times or something. And I just was not doing that in the other builds. So maybe I just need to lean into doing that more and playing into that more in my other build. All right, so now we can go torch this because it blocks. And then we go one of this and one of this. Playing for five. And now, four, five. They can't quite. They can go. Oh no! Even the um. Even the Castle Garenbrig enters tapped here. The next time we got Zoetic and a big swing. And uh, if they get like Warbreaker going after that, we'll be in maybe some trouble. Cavalier of Thorns that can block. We can. Hit them for seven though, down to two. Maybe we map on the combat courier. If we draw a land, we should probably do that.
Alright, let's just Zoetic plus swing for a bunch. They'll take seven down to two, and then they're dead to a lot of stuff. If they block the combat courier, we get a a thing with the next turn. If they block this one, I think we're also fine. We get the uh what you calls it? The unearth to maybe punch through the last few. But this gives us a free card. Casts. All right, another Cavalier. So they have three blockers. We're not quite there in terms of a kill. Next turn, the shrines will be on. They didn't play a land, so maybe they don't have it. Another Carotid. Still three blockers. A haste creature here, damage of any kind. Hmm. Do we attack everything, put them down to one? We lose well, two creatures. They'll probably block here and here. And then we'll have the unearth for next turn, along with the two combat carriers in hand. And let's just go triple one drop pass. And then maybe next turn, case of the filch falcon gives us enough. We're probably going to lose to like Ulamog, and we're just going to have to try to draw into Shrapnel Blast to kill them. I don't think getting a one damage here is enough, so we're just going to say go. Ugin here only kills a few things, but it does kill plenty. So Insol, Spyglass, Epicure, and Filch. Ulamog eats two things. My son, weak zone. Yeah, we can beat that one. Now we get to unearth the combat courier. If we draw a land, we can unearth and filch. They have enough blockers with the lair at the moment. Four, five. Do we map? All right, so they have four, five, five blockers. And we have five, six attackers. I guess the copter doesn't give us an extra threat, so maybe we just end a turn filch. I'm not going to concede until I'm dead or they go up above five. Because we always have the option to just find two Epicure or a Shrapnel Blast. Even when things get at their worst. On Titan of Industry, that one's probably going to beat me. That one will probably beat me. Them gaining a bunch of life here off of it is the thing that sucks the most. Maybe instead of blowing something up, though, they'll gain five mega four four. And then maybe we're still okay if we draw a shadow blast or two. 
If they ever attack, they might just lose. All right, so that's what they do. I don't know. Maybe, I mean, I had a great draw, right? Double insult early? Or was it just single insult early? I don't think, I mean, look, they have Cityscape level in the graveyard. I don't know. This feels, it's not good for me in general. All right, let's go on the clue. Everything's got reach, so it's just about raw bodies at this point. And it's probably just draw shrapnel blasts only. I'm going to Epicure and Smuggler's Copter. I'm just going to make them scared shitless to attack ever. And most of their stuff doesn't trample. Cityscape and this trample, so that's 15, but everything else we can chunt. Bonus is kind of cool. It's like weird mono green. I don't really get playing a bunch of Shrines and Titan of Industry. It makes more sense if you do all the Eldrazi instead, but if you're doing Cityscape, it makes sense. But it doesn't really make sense with Titan. Another Might Stone, okay. So they're going to probably draw two, but they might kill the 4-4. Four -four. All right, Cityscape, swinging in. Probably gonna kill the copter. We'll just take the eight. Three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe they don't kill copter. Maybe they kill a combat carrier. Okay, so now if we draw, if we draw a shrapnel blast, they die because they're tapped out, and they got one, two, three, four, five, six blockers, six attackers. We have the combat courier. There we go. That was pretty good. Bang. All it takes. Oh my god! Oh my god, it's a shadow blast to get him off the top rope! Oh my god! I guess Damage here just kind of screws their whole thing up. Maybe we Dawn so they can't gain life? I think Rebuke's good. Rebuke and Damage here seem fine. Uh, Torsha Tower seems pretty weak if they're Carrioted and Fierce Empath. Maybe it's like this. They have a lot of uh a lot of reach. Maybe my smugglers copters are bad. Trim them. Trim one. Oh my god, it's trying to blast. Oh, uh, sure does, Hedward. Especially when it's a big top deck. Oh, shit. Hey. All right, so I think we lead with Filch. Maybe. Nah, we'll lead with Spyglass Siren. Getting the extra flying damage in matters a lot.
Maybe we copter on two so we get more damage early, like attack damage with flyers. <sighs> Maybe one of their answers is beside you, and that'll just give me an extra land. All right, well, now, now I think I'm just going to play a combat courier and hold up Metallic Rebuke for their whatever this crazy four drop's about to be. Like, we could have went ahead and turned on Case. Uh, I'm going to counter this, but mostly because I want to use my mana, and this is the only thing they're casting this turn, probably. And um, it can maybe smooth out their draw if they don't have enough the right lands or whatever. Oh, they have another Beanstalk. All right, that's fine. Now they're tapped out, so they're not going to besage you us at least. Lance? All right, attack for two, say go. We'll just rebuke anything they play. This is a very passive play because of the rebukes. And it's making me happy that I have a 23rd land, but sad that I'm not drawing any extra lands. And again, we have to just use our mana this turn with the rebuke, and it could stall them out slightly. And it's likely the only spell they're going to play. They didn't play a land, so that's good news, good news. What if I copter? Eh, let's just shove on them. If they have Besaiju, we get to land. And we get to go get Filch Falcon and play. Now the question is, would they miss a land drop? The answer is no. They would not miss a land drop. I'll hold the Besaiju. Well, I found the land, and it's a good one. They can play a six drop. This turn or seven drop next turn. Cavalier of Thorns. That one's scary. I was hoping they would miss land for one more turn. I think we're dead now. We have Shrapnel Blast, so if we get lucky, we can kill them. But I think it's gotta we gotta get really lucky to beat them now. Alright, if we attack with everything, they go to nine. We'll just wait. Get Copter plus Filch down. Cavalier Thorn, still extremely annoying. Maybe I should be playing something else, like a uh, Fading Hope or some shit bouncing it. I really like the uh, dust, dust Watch things, whatever it's called. In the blue-white builds. I wonder if we can find a way to get Mox Amber in the deck. I was thinking about maybe some legends to play. <clears throat> I don't know, though. All right, you win. They went from f <laughs> four mana to Cavalier to Emmer Cool. Very cool. Emmer, very cool. All right, I'm going to get these damn spheres out. I think I don't care. I think Copter actually can come out into more combat carriers, but I don't think I want the damps. Yeah, the removal is great in an in white for sure. Up on Moon for Garenbrig, it's just not enough. It just doesn't affect it enough. Like, I, I didn't even used to bring it in against Nykthos. All right, hands pretty good. We'll keep. I wonder if I discard NT to NT onto.
I think I do. See, we're exiling a Dark Souls Citadel. I would have liked to have drawn that. This is trading a card for one damage this turn and then maybe more damage later. All right, we have to discard. I think we discard Zoetic Glyph. If we hit a blue source, we can go case plus rebuke. All right, that was good. All right, they should block here. Well, they considered not blocking there, which I think is funny. Wonder if there was any argument to only attack with Inti, play Filch, but I didn't have the extra blue to play Filch and the thing. Hmm. I'm not necessarily going to counter the thing they play this turn. I might want to save it for Cavalier. We also we're not turning this on. I didn't know this was a card. I got I, I think I'm gonna counter this because I don't think I'm gonna want to hold up the mana for the Metallic Rebuke next turn. And it might be enough. I'm gonna attack I'm gonna put a counter on this almost for sure. Maybe not now. What are the odds? I think I don't. I think I discard it. That way we get extra damage in with the combat courier. I'm gonna shock in case I want to shroud and blast and pop clue. What do you think of Krenko's Buzz Crusher? It's very expensive and overall very weak, but it's probably fine in like standard in some decks. But it's not personally not that interested. All right, what do we do here, chat? Hey, still not turned on. I guess we could shrapnel blast. That way, if we draw Zoetic, we put Zoetic here. Wait, do we have any Zoetics in deck? Yeah, okay, so all of our things are on, even case. They're blocking next turn whatever we put the counters on. And if we try to blast them, they're dead to any of our insoles because we insult no, because we have to discard to get the buff. So they're not. So I think I just wait in case we draw exactly insole. I can put it on here. Nice. All right, that should be game. You crack clue. I think it's really close. If we draw another artifact, we also turn on case. They block here, take six, and die. Skillful gaming. I mean, you just have to think about the outs, you know. All right, so we shot in a blast face, attacking this, and they take this. All right, four and one, and the the list actually felt pretty good. Um, so we'll do a little post mortem here. Uh, so this build is leaning really heavily into the in soul effects with four cases, four in soul, and three zoetic glyph. I'm not sold that we need all 11, and I don't know that we need more than eight. I think that filch and in soul together are really, really solid, and I want a little more uh, of that type of effect, but I think I might 
really want that in the blue white build where I play, you know, more of these instead of leaning into the um the what you call them and um the uh the Thraven inspectors. My 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 heart is telling me that the Inties and Shrapnel Blasts are super sick in this deck and I, I need to keep them. And uh Zoetic Glyph feels like the most cuttable. And Torch to Tower, like if you just play three Torch to Tower over the third Zoetic Glyph, that's pretty close to stock and it's pretty close to great. And I think Filch Falcon uh, really showcased what it can do, both in jittering an artifact early and being that Zoetic Glyph uh, slash insole artifact on the end of the game. But uh, it's possible that Zoetic just being so one-dimensional compared to Filch, where Filch is an early enabler and also a payoff. Glyph is just a payoff. And so going down to two, maybe even cutting these all together is correct. But I, I have liked the Zoetic Glyphs, and this is one of the reasons why we're playing... 23 lands, and I almost never felt like I flooded. Uh, Combat Carrier continues to be completely mid, but probably worthwhile because of the unearth. Um, what else? The insole artifacts are excellent. Turn 2 insole is very difficult for some decks to deal with. We watched uh, the difference between today's stream and yesterday's was me casting in soul on turn two versus not. And in this league, we cast on turn two quite a bit. I think we had, what, uh, 13 games or so. And I think we had it on turn two, like five or six games, maybe more. Um, Spyglass, Epicure, Combat Courier, Smugglers, Shrapnel, Inti, and Soul. I think that these are all locked in. I think that these five slots here are the only, the only ones in this list that are flexible. Uh, and then there's like a land you can maybe flex out if you cut all the threes. You can go back down to 22 lands. Uh, Gigantha, I think, still solid. Uh, I don't think we cast them this league, but I uh, also forgot to buy them twice, I think. So uh, take that with a grain of salt. Uh, Graft Digger's Cage, I think worse than Unlicensed Hearse. We didn't play against Amalia. That's really where you want Graft Digger's Cage instead of the Hearses. But... Graft Digger's Cage just has so many weaknesses, and um, most of the decks that are heavy graveyard related will have disenchants already for your things. And so we need the, our graveyard stuff to eat the graveyard instead of just putting a shield over the graveyard. And so I'm cutting Cage for sure. I'm probably cutting the third Metallic Rebuke. I like playing an Alpine Moon and two Damping Sphere because I fucking hate Lotus Field. I hate Lotus Field. So that's why I'm keeping these three. Uh, the two Torture Towers, we can make up some space if we bring the third one back into the main. Uh, if you do that, I'd probably put like one Rending Volley or two Rending Volley in the sideboard if you can fit them. Um, but the plan of three Ferocidon, two Grafter Digger's Cage, and two Torture Tower is where I was sitting at for Amalia. And I think that Amalia does require that much commitment to be able to beat anywhere close to 50% 50, 50 of the time. And I think that even if you do that, you're way under 50%. And so it's likely that you should just be not worrying about it right like some matchups are so bad inherently that you have to sacrifice them so that you can increase your percentage points against uh more uh popular matchups or at least just against matchups that are closer you can increase the win percentage chance by a significant enough margin to justify those cyborg slots it's like real micro shit it's real micro nitty-gritty shit that i really don't like having to do you know, but th that's the work. That's when you when we talk about working in magic, working in deck building and stuff, this is the work, you know, figuring out the ins and outs, but also figuring out plans and uh, and figuring out the minutia of what it means to bring in a card or to cut a card from your deck. But uh, that's going to do it for today's video. Uh, I'm Tandy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to come check out my live stream, uh, twitch.tv slash Tandy. Uh, if you're watching this live, make sure to check out our sponsors. Big fan of Brainstorm Brewery Podcast, Slice of Life Magic Podcast, featuring some really awesome, talented, and fun individuals such as my good friend Cass Lynn. Uh, go listen to them talk about uh, Magic the Gathering, community stuff, tournament stuff, you name it. They talk about it if it's magic-related. Uh, thank you so much to Moxfield. Moxfield is where we post all of our deck lists. You can check out their website to share your deck list with your, your friends. Uh, Moxfield.com. This is what we use for all of our stuff. And you can follow me on Moxfield too, so you can see all my iterations of all the decks I'm working on. Thank you so much to Apex Gaming. They recently announced their uh, tournament series uh, uh, season four for 2024. And you can check out apexgaming.gg for more info about the tournament series itself. The first event of the season will start on April 13th weekend. Uh, we're calling it Apex Con. 
And you can come out to Caldwell, Ohio and see me and Ross Merriam and uh, some other awesome players uh, and play some cool Magic the Gathering for big prizes, including multiple RCQ invites as well as, uh, you know, thousands of dollars in cash over two days. Lastly, big shout out to Games of Comics Paradise. Uh, they're a game store out of Fairfax, Virginia. Uh, I appreciate them sponsoring the channel. If you need uh, singles, supplies of any kind for trading card games, Games of Comics Paradise is your one-stop shop. Uh, that's gcparodice.com. Thank you so much to, for watching the stream today. And we'll see you next time. Make sure to hit the follow button on your way out. Peace.